Well, good morning. Welcome to Three Counties Vineyard. Do take a seat. Um, my name is Dave Wright. I'm one of the leaders here. Uh, and it's great to see you. If you're visiting with us, you are especially welcome. It is wonderful to have you. And if you're joining us online, great to have you joining us too. So Andrew and the band are going to lead us in some songs of worship just in a few minutes. We'll take up our offering in the second song. Uh, if you're a visitor, please be our guest and let the offering basket pass you by. This is just how we who go here regularly worship God and keep his work going. Um, after that, we'll have a few family messages, uh, and then we have Andy Carter coming to speak to us, uh, continuing our series on Mark. If you were here last Sunday, um, you might remember that we finished the Gospel of Mark. We just, we did the very last passage. Um, uh, that was because at half term, we sort of jumped ahead from Mark 1 to Mark, I think it was 14, to cover the Easter story during the Easter period. So, so this morning, we're, we're rewinding back and picking up the story at Mark chapter 2. So shall we, shall we just pray before we, we start in sung worship? I'm going to use some words from this morning's Lectio 365 devotional. Holy Spirit, revive us today. Surprise us with your power and your presence as we gather. Heal the sick. Speak words of comfort and faith. Bind up broken hearts. Grant us repentance. Forgive our sins. Pour out your gifts of grace and renew in us an all-consuming passion for Jesus. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Um, I don't know what time it was. I only knew it was dark. And uh, I was woken up by Savannah. <clears throat> and she said, do you hear the birds, Daddy? Well, I did, because it was that early. And she said, they're singing, Hallelujah, God. Well, talk about showing me up. Um, so let's all uh, join creation in singing praise to God. Come, let us worship our King.
Lord, I pray that you would be with them this morning, that they would be in your presence, they would feel your presence, they would feel your love, and they would grow to love you more and more every day. the crescent that lay between
in the way maker you are, Lord, and just for your miracles, and just for the miracle of us being here today in your love. And we just thank you for that grace. Father, help us to speak praise to you through not just our words, not just our songs, but through the way we live our lives for you, Father, that we would be open, our whole lives would be open to you, to be filled by you, less of us, Lord, and more of you. just continue to think about that stay in this moment for another few seconds his wounds have paid my ransom Jesus you chose to go to the cross they didn't take your life from you. You willingly offered your life. Thank you for your love. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. Do have a seat. Ro, would you like to come up and 
Tell us a bit about Let's Do Lunch and small groups. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to tell you about Let's Do Lunch, but while I'm doing that, if Tara and Neil and David want to come up, then um, once I'm done, you can share about some of the small groups we've got. Um, so we're doing something called Let's Do Lunch. Um, in, oh gosh, I've actually written down the sign up by the 22nd, but I think it's the week after. Um, so, but it's in the bulletins, and the idea behind it is really you sign up either to host or you sign up to be hosted. And we get the fun in the office of matching up, and hopefully everything matches. Um, so, yeah, it's a real opportunity just to get to know maybe some people that you don't normally get to know around, around a lunch after the, on, on the Sunday. Um, so please have a look at your bulletins. And if you're quite new to the church and don't get a bulletin and are interested in that, just go on our website, look up the office number, and they can give you the details. And they can also, if you want to get the bulletin, they can, they can do that for you. Um, so please do sign up by the 22nd, either to host or to be hosted. And I just want to say particularly, it's, well, it's open to everybody. So if you come to church on your own, please, please do sign up. But if you come to church and have a big family and think, oh, no, there's too many of us, please, please do sign up. Okay? Um, so small groups this term, uh, we've got a few new ones and um, um, lots of existing ones starting. So just to explain, for us, church on a Sunday is really important, gathering together as a big group, but also really to go deep in relationship, to get to know one another, to walk through life together. We really believe in small groups as a way of really connecting with one another, supporting, praying for one another. So we have lots of different types of small groups because we get that there's lots of different types of people. And some people love sitting around doing a Bible study together. Other people would rather go on a bike ride and then pray at the end together, things like that. So there's lots of um, activity groups, there's courses, and there is community groups. So please do have a look. But I'm just going to hand over to these guys. So first of all, I'm actually going to ask Tara, because she's got two to do. So I'm going to ask Tara to go first and last. So, Tara, would you like to explain about imaging the story first? Yeah. Um, so this is a wonderful, wonderful course, imaging the story. Um, it is very, very creative. Um, and I did it, oh gosh, a couple of years ago, but it was just so impactful um, because you, you follow God's saving love story through just beautiful artwork and poetry. So if that's your thing. If you're creative, this is your thing. Please come to it. And actually, even if you're not creative, because you just get, you, you see God's love story in a different way through the way people um, show it in their, in their artwork and in their poetry. And then you get to play and have lots of fun with paint and stuff and get messy um, and yeah, it can be like, you know, just really creative abstract art. Um, so you don't have to be just perfect fine line drawing. It's just wonderful. It's wonderful. And you work together and you just experience God's love through his saving story together. So I really, really recommend it. It's a wonderful, powerful way. And um, Simon and I even went off to Winchester to go and see the amazing cathedral and um, what happens down there. So that's a little taster. Suitable for guests? Yeah, please do come, anybody. It's, it's just a really wonderful way of engaging with God's story um, in, a, in a fresh way. And um, yeah, it's good. Have I said everything? Yeah, yeah, wonderful. So that is on Tuesdays at 1.30 to 3.30. So it's a, it's a daytime group um, and it's going to be here. Um, and yeah, it is something that you can invite people who are just, maybe they don't know the the. Christian story, the, the story of Jesus, and it really does do it in a very creative way um, and a very, yeah, easy way that you can invite friends who aren't Christians to. Um, right, next, Neil, do you want to come and share? <laughs> um, so, Neil and Liza have done connect groups for newcomers many times before, and they very, very kindly said they'd do another one for us, wrote them in again, so I'm going to hand over to you. Brilliant. Thanks, Ray. Um, I'm Neil, and my wife, lovely wife, Liza, who's not here this morning, um, 
We've run the group a couple of occasions, and it's been so much fun. If you've been on a Connect group, can you put your hands up? Not just to ours, but other people's. Did you, and they're still here. It's wonderful. Um, <laughs> so uh, we're going to meet on uh, every week, and we're going to have uh, some food and just a time of fellowship and relaxed conversation um, and lots of just chewing what happens on a Sunday and many different things like that. Uh, it's just a pretty simple format, very, very relaxed, because uh, that's just kind of how we are. Um, we're going to start a week on Tuesday, and at our house, we're down the far end of, of Hammer Lane here, it turns into Lip Hook. Um, we do all manner of different things. Um, you are so welcome to come along. Uh, Row and Dave sneak in every now and again. They don't have to be invited, they just turn up. Uh, and we get other guys, uh, you know, who have you know, points of responsibility within the church just to come along and share what the kind of things they're up to. So you get a real good flavor of what Three Counties is like. And that's our aim. We only run it for two terms uh, and you're happy to join us at any point in that and then we'll send you on your way as a platform and springboard for something new, a new group, a new activity, anything like that. But for two terms, uh, that's probably as much as you'll be able to put up with us for. <laughs> Thanks so much. Wonderful. Um, David, do you want to share about volleyball? So volleyball has uh, started again. Uh, we had our first session on Friday last. It, it was brilliant. <laughs> um, great fun. Um, come along, bring, bring your friends. Uh, it's a, a really good way to sort of stay a bit fit <laughs> um, without it being, you know, like a very intense workout. It's, it's fun rather than activity. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. Um, and um, I would recommend it uh, Fridays um, at Hammer Recreation Area. Please sign up because then you'll get the details because we only play when it's sunny. So... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so if it's raining, it's not on. And what time is it? Six o'clock. Six, six o'clock until, uh, until, until it's dark, until you can't see the ball. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so that's a great one. And, again, really good one to invite friends to. And, just, and don't feel like if you sign up, you have to go necessarily every week. You know, they get, we get it. It's a Friday night. You know, there'll be some times you, you can't do. But um, hopefully there's lots of people signing up so that you can come and go. Um, Tara again. I was just saying that must be Dave diving for the ball there. Cool. And so this this course, whoops, throwing everything. This is um, a course called Practicing the Way. Um, I think I might have mentioned this before. This this book by John Mark Coomer, and they've now developed a course um, which is really exciting. It's all about spiritual formation, which just means about how we are becoming, what, we, what we're becoming, who we're becoming, and, and how God is forming us. And uh, so we're going to look at how we, we are following Jesus, the ways to follow Jesus. And some of you, this is great for people who are just starting out on this journey of following Jesus. Um, but it's also for those who've, who've been on the journey for a while. And, and it's a chance for us to, to grow together, to start being apprentices together, practicing the way in different ways, um, doing... Um, Different things in community so that we'll come together, we'll learn a little bit, and then we'll go into the week and try and practice what we've been learning. And then we'll come back in after we've reflected and worked out, you know, how was that for us, and share it with each other. So it's a really great, you don't have to have this book, but it's recommended, and we sort of follow it in a, in a very gentle way, so it's great. Yeah, so and that's uh, Wednesday evenings, half past seven. At your house. At ours. So that's in chat. Yeah. Yes. So all the details of all those groups and many, many others are on the website. Um, and, yeah, I would also just highlight there's also still spaces on the bereavement course. Um, or It's called the bereavement journey. And so particularly if you n know anyone, you know, not necessarily within church, but neighbors or family or friends outside where you think they might find it helpful to be part of, I think it's six weeks of just... a a group sessions together looking at different aspects of, of grief and, and um, yeah, some helpful things in that. So please do pass that on to people. And also there's a tackling anxiety course that's also on there. So again, if you or other people that you know of are struggling with anxiety, please do take a look at that and share that. 
Um, and then lots and lots of community groups. So if you just feel you're ready to get in, stuck into a group that's long term, there's various groups, there's spaces on groups like um, the Lip Hook group, um, Well Connected, there's, there's various others. So please, if you're looking for that, um, have, a, have a look there. And if, if you just aren't sure, do feel free to give me a call um, or email me and I can sort of suggest ones to you. Thank you. Thank you. Two other quick things just to point out. Um, at 12 o'clock, just after the service, downstairs in the lounge, um, people will be gathering together to, for the Open Doors prayer meeting. So if you'd like to pray for the persecuted church, your brothers and sisters across the world who are being persecuted for their faith, that's 12 o'clock for an hour uh, downstairs just right after this service. Um, and then on Friday, um, there is the Springs evening for ladies. Um, so you can grab a leaflet here, there might be some still at the back, or chat to Viv, and um, that's at 7.45 um, on Friday, um, and it's about a better story, reaching into our past, present, and future. Great. Andy, would you like to come up and uh, read uh, to us, so it's Math, uh, Mark chapter 2, come on up, I think verses 1 to 12, is that right? A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. So many gathered that there was no room left, not even outside the door, and he preached the word to them. Some men came, bringing to him a paralytic, carried by four of them. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus, and after digging through it, lowered the mat the paralyzed man was lying on. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some teachers of the law were sitting there thinking to themselves, Why does this fellow talk like that? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Immediately, Jesus knew in his spirit that this is what they were thinking in their hearts. And he said to them, why are you thinking these things? Which is easier, to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up, take your mat, and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. The paralytic got up, took his mat, and walked out in full view of them all. This amazed everyone, and they praised God, saying, we have never seen anything like this. Amen. Thanks, Andy. Andy, let's just pray for you. <laughs> so, so many Andys and Andrews today. Father, I just pray that as Andy comes to, to share what God has placed on his heart for us this morning, would you give us open hearts to hear your word to us? Amen. Amen. Oh, man, can you hear me okay? Great. There's some crazy passages in the Bible, aren't there? Um, and this is one of them. Um, and as I was... Preparing for this Sunday, I, the first moment I, t time I read the passage, I almost, if I'm honest, I almost felt a bit annoyed by it. Breaking the roof down just seems audacious. It seems impatient. It, and, and my very British sensibilities were thinking, just for goodness sake, just wait. Just stand outside and wait. He, he'll be out in a moment. Just hang on. And as I thought on this, I, I was thinking, Jesus' ministry seemed to be characterized and punctuated by what I'm going to call ugly interruptions. The, these moments where stuff happens that almost just makes you cringe a bit. It's like, ugh. There's a moment, and we're going to look at it in a few weeks' time, when Jesus is on his way to heal this little girl who's about to die. 
And as he's on his way, a woman comes out, reaches and touches him for healing. And Jesus stops and talks to this woman. And while he's there talking to her, the, the little girl that he's meant to be to, going to heal dies. That, that's an ugly interruption. Or the scene where there's two blind men by the road and Jesus is walking along and they just yell at him, son of David, have mercy on us. And everyone's like, be quiet. And they're like, son of David, have mercy on us. These are, these are ugly interruptions. And these guys who rip the roof open, it's an ugly interruption. But here's the thing. Jesus seems pleased with these moments. Do you see what it says in verse 5? When Jesus saw their faith. And what I had characterized as an ugly interruption, Jesus saw faith. And we can relate to this, can't we? If you've been in church for any amount of time, you will, you'll know a little bit of this. That there's sometimes moments when something happens and you go, oh, not today. <laughs> and it... And the, and and it almost makes you cringe when somebody interrupts or just breaks the mold or does something out of the norm and you think, oh. And there was a guy who used to come to this church who really got this. Um, and his name's Matthew Hyde. Now we love Matthew Hyde and Matthew's with Jesus today. But Matthew understood how to break the roof down. You'd be coming to the end of a, um, a time of worship and everybody's literally just about to sit down and suddenly Matthew would erupt into a spontaneous prayer and everybody would be stuck in the, should I sit down, should I stand up? <laughs> and these prayers weren't polished. They weren't usually particularly theologically dense and they usually almost went on longer than you hoped they would. <laughs> And it, but it was like Matthew was like, I, I don't care. This is my moment to talk to the master. This is my moment to get to Jesus. And here's the thing. It's like, I think that heaven almost came close in our services when Matthew spoke up. That it was almost like as we stood under the falling plaster of Matthew's interruption, Jesus looked at the, this church and he saw faith. And I think we could do with breaking the roof down a little bit more often. Being willing to just look a fool. When was the last time you just looked a fool because you wanted to get to Jesus? And I think a really simple and practical example of this is when the host says, um, we're going to have prayer at the back. And you have that moment where you think, oh, I shouldn't have prioritized sitting over the radiator next to, instead I should have sat in the aisle. <laughs> because I've got to get past everyone now and go out for prayer. What are they going to think? I think that's a roof to be broken down. That's a moment just to say, oh, forget it, I'm going to go. The Son of Man sees faith. And he's pleased with it. And so having made this audacious interruption, the roof is open, Jesus is stood, plastering his hair. There's a... There's a, there's a a hush, and everybody suddenly waits. What, what is Jesus going to do? What's he going to do? And then Jesus does something unexpected. He looks at this man and he says, Son, your sins are forgiven. <laughs> to quote my dad, What? What? You're like, Jesus, this man can't walk. And you, you're talking about sin? What's going on? I, I, I want to suggest this. Jesus is redefining this man's greatest need. He's looking at him and he's redefining his, his greatest need. During lockdown, I, I did um, tons of mountain biking because I, I was at the time I was living in Plymouth and I just had lots of time and the weather was amazing. So I went out and I was doing lots of cycling and I remember getting home one day and saying to the family that I was lodging with, um, do you know, it's been a while since I've had a crash. 
silly thing to say. Um, the next Sunday, I went out and, and had what can only be described as a face-to-face -face appointment with a tree. Um, and in the process, I dislocated my shoulder. Um, anyway, I went to hospital, I had it put back in, um, and then I, I had a round of physio done um, and got it back up to strength. I was doing really well. But then 10 months later, um, I was up at a climbing wall and I did it again, dislocated it again. And so I went back to the hospital and um, had an appointment with the doctor and I was anticipating that they would say, right, we're going to sign you up for physio um, and we'll get it back up to strength and we'll go again. But the, the doctor sat me down and, and said, look, you've, you've got a problem with this, this shoulder. If I recommend you for physio, this is probably just going to happen again and again and again. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm actually recommending you for surgery. My, my need had been redefined. I went thinking I needed physio, but I was told I needed surgery. And I think this is exactly what Jesus is doing with this man. Jesus is looking at this, this man, and in the same way that the doctor said to me, this goes deeper than muscles and ligaments, Jesus is saying to this man, you've got a problem that goes deeper than your immediate physical need. You need forgiveness. And you know, I've really wrestled with this this week as I've prepared. Because this man's suffering wasn't insignificant. You know, paralysis is a life-altering disability. It affects how you work, your leisure, the pain of it, the, the emotional weight of just having a body that's different to everyone else's. This is not, it's not insignificant suffering. And I've been acutely aware in preparing this week that to stand up here and say Jesus is redefining this man's need could sound like I'm saying Jesus doesn't care about this man's physical need. But let me, I want to say this, we can say with certainty that Jesus cared about this man's physical need more than we can dream. Because just before this, Jesus went and touched a man with leprosy. Jesus consistently met people's physical needs. But Jesus also knew that in the same way that physio wouldn't have fixed my shoulder, he could heal this man, but he still leave consumed by greed. Or he could heal him, but he'd still go back to secret addictions that keep him in, enslaved. That he could heal him, but he'd still be stuck in cycles of unforgiveness and bitterness that just poison his relationships. And I, I don't know what was going on in this man's life. I really don't. But the thing is, I don't need to know. Because the same thing goes on in here. That I can get my external world in order with the things I want, the life I want. But I still have this problem. This is what the Bible calls sin. It's not, a, it's not a popular message today. It's been lost from the vocabulary of, of many churches. But It's not a popular message. But I have this problem that I, I do the things that I don't want to do. And I don't do the things that I want to do. And the more I seem to kind of try and correct that, the more I come up against it. The more I see it more clearly. Do you know, it's so easy to watch the news at the moment and, and look at what's going on in the world and think, the problem's out there. The problem's out there. But this week, I've been thinking about it. I'm like, do you know what else is a problem is that the ease with which I can switch my computer off and not give that even a second thought. That's a problem too. The problem isn't just out there, it's in here. And it's not until we grasp that fact that these wo words of Jesus, these world-changing, destiny-altering words mean anything to us. Son, your sins are forgiven. So I can stand here and say I've been a Christian for two decades now that these words remain to me the most precious thing in the world. Son, your sins are forgiven. 
That when God looks at Andy Carter, he doesn't see his, his wayward heart. Do you know that the forgiveness of Jesus is not a cold pardon. It's a warm embrace. It's not you've been a bad lad, now don't do that again. The, the, the forgiveness of Jesus is an embrace. It goes right to the depths of my heart. This is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. That, that's what we sung this morning. The choice of songs this morning was brilliant. Just like so much of that, that Jesus came for this. But there's one question left. Does Jesus have the authority to do this? In verse 7, it said, The teachers of the law said, This fellow is blaspheming. No one can forgive sins but God alone. Where is your authority to say these things? I don't know if any of you during lockdown saw that hilarious video of a um, parish council meeting that dis- uh, was held over Zoom and descended into complete chaos. Um, there were arguments, there were people just bickering and fighting, there was a power struggle going on. And, and the climax of this meeting was when one of the um, councillors shouted, you have no authority here, Jackie Weaver. <laughs> and this is the climax of this interaction today as well. The, the, the Pharisees are saying, you have no authority to say that, Jesus. Absolutely no authority. And the way Jesus answers is he says this, I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority to forgive sins. So I tell you, get up, take your mat, go home. And so the man got up, took his mat, and walked out in full view of them all. Jesus answered the question by a sign. It was like, when a policeman pulls his badge out of the um, pocket and says, please. Jesus answered by a sign. Look, he couldn't walk a minute ago. He can now. Can you do that? But there's a little verse I want us to notice. Verse 12. And so the man got up, took his mat, and walked out in full view of them all. In full view of them all. Sometimes the little throwaway comments of the Bible are the ones that give us the most. In full view of them all. If, if there's one thing we've learned so far in our journey through Mark about when Jesus did a healing, what did, I'll ask you, what, what did Jesus usually do when he'd done a healing? Don't tell anyone. Don't tell anyone. And yet in this moment, it says, Jesus said, in f- get up, and the man got up, and we're specifically told, in full view of them all. Jesus knows what he's doing. Why? Why? Do you know, I think, just for a moment, Jesus is just lifting the lid on the sort of king that he's come to be. Do you know, like a, like a pot on the stove, we've, we've smelt some of the aromas of what Jesus' kingship might be like. We've seen a few healings. We've heard a few words. But I think Jesus, in this moment, with this miracle, is peel, lifting the lid just for a second. He's saying, look, this is the sort of king I've come to be. And I, and I just want to land us, land us with this. In the, in the line, The Witch in the Wardrobe, there's a, there's a wonderful part where Mr. Beaver is explaining to Susan what Aslan the lion is like. And he says this, Aslan is a lion, the lion, the great lion. Oh, said Susan, I thought he was a man. Is is he quite safe? I shall feel rather nervous about meeting a lion. Safe? said Mr. Beaver. Who said anything about safe? Of course he isn't safe, but he's good. He's king, I tell you. And and in this moment, 
This this miracle that Jesus uh, decides to let everybody see. He's lifting the lid and he says, look, I'm not safe. Do you know, it's not safe to hear that you've got a deep, deep problem that needs solving. But he's good. Do you know, Jesus didn't come to to be a genie's lamp that we can rub to get what we want when we want it. He, He came to meet our deepest need, which is forgiveness and reconciliation with God. You know, son, your sins are forgiven. That's not a safe thing to say. And in fact, saying that got him wound up on a cross. It wasn't safe, but it was good. Good Friday. Maybe this morning you've been trying to keep Jesus within a box. I'll let him at the peripherals. I'll get him to help me with my plans, but not let him in too deep. Can I just say this morning, he isn't safe, but he's good. He's really good. And the invitation today is this, come and break the roof open. Risk it. Look a fool. Be like Matthew. Allow him to redefine what it is that you truly need. And then know this, the Son of Man has authority to forgive sins. Andrew, do you want to come up? Love vast as the ocean, love and kindness as the flood. When the prince of life, our ransom, shed for us his precious blood, who is love will not remember. You can see. Morning's 
stop Chariots and to claim his loved ones Gathered in from near and far. We're going to just spend some time responding to what God has spoken to us. Um, and it just might be different things that God has spoken to each one of us. Um, and I'd love to do that through sharing uh, the Lord's Supper together, communion, um, the bread and wine, as we focus on Jesus' body given for us and his blood shed for us. So what we'll do, we'll do it slightly differently to how we usually do it. Um, I'm just going to uh, read a little passage first and then I'll ask the stewards to uh, give out the, um, the wine and the bread. There's gluten-free bread as well, so you can give them a wave if you would like gluten-free bread. And then if you, when you get that, um, if you just hold on to it, um, then we'll, we'll share the communion together just once everybody has got that. Um, so let me just read Paul's direction in, in 1 Corinthians. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he'd given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So stewards, if you'd like to come up and just um, pass around the, the um, bread and wine and for everyone we welcome anybody who knows and loves Jesus to, to share communion with us Set apart for you. 
So hopefully you've got some bread and some wine if you want some. Um, let's just pause for a moment. Jesus' body was broken and his blood was shed for the forgiveness of sins. So let's... Let's just think for a moment on his death and what that means to you. For some of you, it might be the first time that you're thinking about this invitation to receive forgiveness. For others, it might be the thousandth and first time. So why don't we take bread and just receive Christ's body that was given for you. Receive his forgiveness. Take the cup representing his blood. Let's give thanks for his love and once again receive the life that was poured out for us. We're going to continue to worship. Um, Andy mentioned about being brave and stepping out. If you've, if you've asked Jesus for forgiveness for the first time, um, as we share the, um, the bread and wine, we'd love to pray with you. Um, actually, maybe can the prayer ministry team, can you guys head to the back of the main hall? Um, if that's you, just come to the back and one of the prayer ministry team will find you and We'd love to chat with you and pray with you. And there may be others that are just, you, you know you need prayer this morning. God's just highlighted something throughout the service. It might have been through a, a song. It might have been through something Andy shared. It might have been something completely different. And you just know you need prayer. We'd love to pray with you. So just as we, as we stand, as we begin to sing, just make your way to the back and grab one of the prayer ministry team. God sent his son They call him Jesus He came to love He will forgive He lived and died To buy my
start singing it and um, hopefully you'll pick it up as we go and it doesn't stop us focusing on God. Book of life. 
life opens and judgment begins. You are the Christ. You are the Holy One of God. You reign in glory. You are the Christ. Lord, thank you once again just for that reminder that you reign in love. Jesus, thank you for your love that just propelled you to come to earth to be with us. That took you to the cross to die for us, to reconcile us back to you. Thank you for the love that reaches out to each one of us, even this morning, to draw us into you. So, Lord, we choose to receive your forgiveness. We choose to welcome your love. And we also choose, Lord, to go out and live for you. So, Lord, would you take us from here into the rest of this day, into the week, to live and to work to your praise and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining us. Coffee is served at the back. And if you need prayer for anything at all, just grab me or Andy or one of the, the prayer ministry team. Bless you.